Hello, Hylion fans. HYLN is the ticker. Um, I figured I'd do another video. I chatted it up over the weekend with some friends, and I owe it to them. Um, all right, so management had some good things to say. They laid out some, um, at least some tangible dates for later this year on the hybrid axle and the SRX or the Hypertruck. Uh, so looks like they're comfortable with that. Earlier it was a little green and now it's a little red and that's part of the point today so let's start there regardless of what we think of any stock um, it has to trade within the prism of the whole market so let's go there first so SMP I know feels like it's painful right real pain huge dip or is it I'm gonna share you a chart share with you a chart where is the dip right it's one red tick in the long scheme of things um, a 10% correction would put it here. This is literally where reverting to the mean. A 20% correction puts it here, and the bulls will still be in charge. So how will all the stocks do if this is going on? I'm not calling for a 20% correction. I'm just saying right now the CPI is so hot that it may tie the Fed's hands. And three things drive the market, one of which is the Fed because it is responsible for money flowing into the economy and right now they're pouring it on one point almost five one point five trillion dollars a year they will have to taper that you've heard that word taper tantrum um so listen to their yak i don't like the fed i don't like wall street altogether and what comes out of their, them is just garbage so i do my own homework and i use the charts so i don't li listen to the news zero wall street BS news, zero CNBC news, all own homework. Um, you like the company, you do your homework on it. You study the charts. If you don't know how to read charts, ask for help because the charts is where it's at because it's machines trading and I'll show you. So within this S&P, there's risk on all stocks, including Hylion. I'm gonna go next to AMD to get to Hylion. This is a stock I personally prefer. I, I, I like a lot. I was long it. I booked my profits into this rally. I was long it up here. I booked my profits. I shorted it here via a debit put spread. Nice mild way of shorting it. I shared it with members, so I'm on record with that. And then I said, I'm watching. This alert is, uh-oh. And this alert is get long big. This is coming because they built a big house that looks like a complex head and shoulders now and machines will sell it if it loses yesterday's low remember that statement yesterday today is 512 yesterday is uh, Tuesday and the markets had a tizzy right it bounced hard if we lose that hard bounce it's a trigger lower the machines will sell it hard why they built this whole huge house on top of a stick foundation with two holes in it that's not normal normally if I see a stock rally consolidate a long period of time and break out from this consolidation it's going to high heaven but you can't do that not likely while leaving this kind of schmad i don't want to cuss uh, a crappy foundation below so on to hylion okay so th let's talk facts not opinion uh, uh, um, this is a descending channel correct but at least from here you can see higher lows higher highs um, lower lows, lower highs, I wish, right? So it's a descending channel. How do you establish a bottom? It shouldn't be a V bottom, like boing. It is a process, and it starts like they did here. So stuck in a descending channel, step one, stop making lows. And go sideways, build a base, and then start making higher lows and higher highs. While you build the base, what happens is you start meeting the descend on ch descending channel. So in this case, uh, that's an important note. If you can pause it and read it, it tells you why the market is having a dizzy today and where the risk lies going forward. It's a fundamental, nothing to do with charts. Um, okay, so you make a low, uh, you stop making lower lows, right? But meanwhile, you can still make high, uh, lower highs. That's fine, but they'll come to blows somewhere here, and then eventually, if this stop, this floor holds you get above outside this channel and you start tackling one failed level at a time and then you can start building a higher lows and an ascending channel so whatever was selling machines sell the pop the machines know they sell every pop and it's not a coincidence where they sell it it's like 
clockwork. I'll prove it to you a little bit later. And then they go sideways, and then they decide, okay, so control now can head back into the buyers. When control goes to the buyers, it means they start buying the dips rather than selling the pops. That's why you establish higher lows, and then you recover. So these, um, they take the wind out of everything. So here's how it got ruined last time. Beautiful consolidation zone. Then a headline breaks out. Then the ferocious appetite of the bulls just blew their wad all in one day. And they couldn't even fill the gap. That was such easy pickings once you get to here. What's worst is they took their time uh, two days to get back there and failed just below the huge failure then. Um, the, f the big reversal then. So it was a big day. My 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 coach, my fighting coach, came, um, texted me. What do I do? I'm up. I bought it at 18 and change. I said, book it. Even though you may miss out on upside. It was a trade for him. He booked it. Um, so I listened to him in fighting. So he listened to me in this. And he saved himself a lot of hassle. All right. So let's let me make the statement on what's going on with the stock right now if the spy if the markets stabilize down here it's not an obvious mistake to own it okay if i own it from up here i have no reason to add down here because there's nothing new it's just an attempt but it's way better than somebody chasing it up here somebody chasing it on that day somebody chasing it up here into prior failing positions those um, are throwing themselves into trouble potential trouble somebody trying to pick a bottom when they have one reason for it you only have one reason for it so if I wanted to buy highly on stock today or calls or sell puts which is a bullish position by the way uh, I would do it but I would set a stop meaning if it goes below yesterday whatever the low was yesterday um, can't read it from here 7.84 uh, whatever the low was yesterday, if it goes below it, I would stop myself out because that tells me they're not making a stand like they did here. And I don't want to find out where they go. Technically, I'm not going to say where they can go because it's going to upset people and it serves no, no purpose. Just be warned that it will be a trigger for more sellers. And you can just imagine what they will do with it. Wall Street is not nice. They're out to screw as many people as they can at every point in time. That's a theory. It's called Max Payne theory. Look it up. Uh, so, if you trade that way, you be um, you would avoid obvious mistakes. So this is not an obvious mistake to a mistake to try and base. But I would stop myself out below yesterday's low because I don't know where the low is. So question mark. When I don't know, I'm leaving my fortunes in somebody else's hands. Worse, somebody from Wall Street. Who wants that, right? So why do that? If it's falling, I'll pick it up later. Um, you know, if, if I loved it here, why wouldn't I love it down here? So let me get out and I'll pick it up later. And if I loved it here, I'm going to love it here and here and here. So where's the rush to be all in all the time and double down and pick a credit card debt and I saw somebody one time in my comments that said they borrowed 50 grand on their credit card behind their wife's back, which is scary enough, scarier even that he got 12 likes on that comment. Um, you know, I don't think there's, I, I'm certain there isn't one school that teach you how to <laughs> invest or anybody uh, that tells you that's a good idea to borrow on a credit card behind your wife's back, first of all, <laughs> to get long a stock you love. You shouldn't love a stock to the point where you can't make an objective opinion. I love the company. I love what they're doing. I love their truck. I don't love the stock. I trade the stock. Maybe I can make money at it. Maybe not. So if you tell me you must go long here today or I'm going to break your arm, I'll go long. <laughs> but it's just a bet that it's bottomed. So it's a better bet than the people that did it up here. So you're smarter doing it now than before. But I wouldn't double down if I'm already red. Because of the overall market is shaky. Let that settle down a little bit. If the Fed tapers, if you don't know what that means, Google it. If they stop buying every month, they're spending $120 billion to put money into the economy. If they stop that or lower it, the market will have a freak out moment. Look it up. It's called the taper tantrum. It happened to Ben Bernanke before. It happened to Fed Powell in 2018 when we crashed into the uh, December. And then what changed? 
that was the moment of change when he said, oh, I was kidding, I'm not going to raise rates anymore. Uh, I'm going to bring back uh, buying, like that $120 billion. I'm going to cut rates down to zero, and he did all of that. Well, now today we got the CPI that's the highest in like 50 years or 40 years. Uh, I looked it up. The core CPI, which is when they take out food and energy, uh, hasn't been this high since the 90s, late 80s, early 90s. I, I, 1996 pops to mind. I did the chart myself and um, based on the government data. So there is a huge inflation. It's their job to keep inflation low. Inflation is there because they're keeping money loose. So they can't keep money loose because their job is to keep inflation low. So they said they would ignore it, but I don't think, uh, I think they're lying. This is what, you know, listen to their, I think Clarida speaks today, a couple more speak later. Listen to the next Powell statement. It might not be as happy for markets as we, uh, we might hear. And it could be huge happy, I don't know. So this is the where, okay, I have a certain level of conviction for the stock, but I have to incorporate something from the overall economy as well. All right, Nick signing out. Hopefully, this didn't offend anybody. It shouldn't have. I, I was pretty positive about it. Good luck to you. I would say join the group. I do have a link down below, but I don't know if I have a lot of fans among you guys and gals. Later, bye.